Hey guys, still here and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Today we're going to have some larger fleet actions. The situation is as follows. The date is July 13th, 1944. The secret Kriegsmarine base at Antarctica is currently under siege. You are in command of the fleet of prototype ships in Antarctica. Your ship, sorry, your fleet, not your ship. Your fleet consists of three type prototype O-class battlecruisers, three prototype Rune-class heavy cruisers, two prototype L-class light cruisers, and six type 1944 Z-class destroyers. Now, of course, I can only design one of these ships, so it is going to be the design of the battlecruiser that I'll be taking on today. The US fleet is coming in in force. Whereas we only have battlecruisers, they have battleships. Now, we have prototype ships, which means that the US has a tech disadvantage of five years. But between 1940 and 1935 tech, the difference is not that great. So this can definitely still, well, it can really work out for the US, let's put it that way. The win condition for this scenario is particularly difficult and I think outright impossible. All of your ships must survive, and you must destroy all enemy ships. Now, destroying the all enemy ships part, I think, is doable. Surviving all ships, every single one of these ships has to remain afloat? I don't think so. I don't think that that's going to work. Because, especially with Alpha 7-6, the destroyers have become fragile, especially against the secondary armament of battleships, but definitely also against the primary armament of heavy cruisers and light cruisers. So keeping all these guys alive is very, very difficult. Now, as for the modern large battle cruiser that we are currently building, there are some regulations that were submitted, and these are as follows. I need to have these in centimeters. I need to have three 305 millimeter guns, six 128 millimeter guns and a speed of 36 knots and medium armor. Um, I'm not sure exactly what would qualify as medium armor, but at least I know what to build as far as main armaments concerned. And um, we have, what was it, 305, so that's eight inch? Six, seven, eight, nine, no. It's number four. 12 inch guns. Okay. 12 inch guns against a battleship. That's going to be a challenge. A pretty substantial challenge. I'm thinking the main tactic is going to be to try and keep these things at bay by using the main armament. Uh, I'm only allowed to have three of those 305mm guns, or rather, three turrets of such. This is going to be a tricky fight. I don't like fighting those battleships. Battlecruisers can do it, but it's risky. Minimum speed of 36 knots. Nothing is said about displacement. Um, upping that to maximum might not help me though. So I'm gonna keep them relatively small to make my turning circle relatively small. And hopefully by doing so, keep the torpedoes off of my ship. Of course, I'm not counting on my ability to do so, so I will install some anti-torpedo blisters and some barbettes, lots of armor. Uh, we are prototypes, so we're going to go with best range finders. And we also need to have six 128mm guns. Uh, I'm not sure if he means this per side or in total. I'm going to say per... well... If it is six, one hundred and... Sorry, yeah, it's six times two. So it's... There we go. Yeah, one, two, three. I think that's how he has envisioned this. Although I'm not exactly sure. Can I move this back? No. So that would mean I'd have to move the rest forward. There is a lot of bow on this ship. Jesus. All right, install the guns again. Look at all this this space over here on the deck. What am I going to do with all that? 
what am I going to use all that for? Can I small on these things? Yeah. These are pretty petite battle cruisers. 34,000 tons. Um, relatively high amount of firepower and a relatively low turning circle of only 497 meters. Hopefully this is going to keep the enemy at bay. Um, I'm thinking of just turtling up with the rest of the ship. Just putting more armor on her. There, perfect displacement. Uh, we still have a bit to upgrade though. Hydroacoustic search. Let's go with radio direction finding. Um, two powder. Heavy shells. These are the most advanced I can get, which is why I have such a low turning circle. When I start to tack on more armor, that turning circle is going to go up. Or is it? Yeah, it just went up by one meter when I put 752 millimeters of belt armor on there. I need to figure out what this is in the normal measurement system of the game. 25 inches of belt armor is a bit much for a battle cruiser. 10 inch, I'd say, is all right. Conning tower, critical. Long range fire is critical on this mission. Uh, turrets, please stay with me and don't go jumping off the ship. Secondaries, mm, I have some, but not much. Can I go to 14? Yes. Bit more deck. No, that's a bit too much. I'd rather sacrifice the secondaries than the primaries. Okay, we have a perfect displacement on this ship. We have 34,000 tons. We have a forward weight offset of 0.1%. We have nine of these 12 inch guns, or 305 millimeter guns, which fire every 22 seconds. They have a decent amount of penetrative power, especially at greater range through deck plunging, but at shorter range, well, if it's belt armor that I want to penetrate, I'm going to have to get pretty damn close. Which for a battle cruiser is not really the place you'd want to be. As for the five... Oh, hold on. These are five inch guns. They're supposed to be six. Oh, shit. That means that I probably will not have... There we go. Enough displacement for them. I know that they're supposed to fit in these slots, but I think this is a better spot for them. Because now they cover a lot more of my ship. And similarly here. And these things are going to sit here. I know that there's these little nooks inside the main tower. But overall I find that they're restrictive. Not assisting. Wait. Port? Wait. Oh. Oh, hello. We have to stay behind. Um, here. Here. And here. And now I still have to take off some armor somewhere. I'm going to need to take off a lot of armor. Please don't. Uh, and detorp. Yeah, that'll do. After weight offset is a bit higher. So we're going to shift the main turret forward. There we go. Put on a bit more armor. So we can get the secondaries back to 5 inch strength. Yes. Turrets to 15 strength. Yes. The deck armor is going to be the death of these ships. But the problem is, if you tack on just 0.1 inch, your displacement jumps up by 35 tons. So it's very, very difficult to get that thing up to a decent level. Okay, well, this is it. This is the Mars, and we're going to put the Mars to the test. Really hoping that I get a bunch of useful heavy cruisers and light cruisers. I get three heavies, two lights, and six DDs. 
And with that, I have to take on a fairly sizable US fleet. Let's see what they gave me. These are the Mars and the Bayern. Then we have the V1. Germans still aren't very creative with their naming convention. These destroyers have a displacement of 1750 tons with a minimum bulkheads. Loads of torpedoes. They have enough for quite a few launches. Ranging to 12-1 and traveling at 36 knots, which means they're probably electric. The light cruisers, Hamburg and Lübeck, standard amount of bulkheads, 7-inch guns. Yeah, these can be useful. Taking out DDs. Heavy cruisers? No. Why? Why is that really required? Minimum bulkheads. At least they come with 8 torpedo tubes per side. The range on these is relatively short at only 9.5 but they travel fast at 62 knots you got 8 inch main battery a total of 12 guns and then a bunch of 4 inch and a load of 2 inch the turning circle is 576 this is critical when dodging torpedoes 425 and 333 with a maximum actually I think the heavies the heavies take more time to turn than the battle cruisers all right, where is the U.S. fleet that is currently encountering, or rather sieging, the Antarctica base? This is potentially a light cruiser. What else? DD? Arguably. Some torpedo tubes. Not too many. Although they do seem to be hiding a few of those in the depth charge launcher. Okay. American battleships. Hmm. That's a pretty neat design. Pretty neat design. Well done to the AI. Ranging 14.6. Set target. Battleship. And then over here we got more destroyers. Okay, where are my own ships positioned? Over there. Hmm. That sucks. Heavy cruisers turn out. Mm, light cruisers follow. I'm considering getting the V1 to join the destroyer group, but getting it there is tricky. Because I'd have to breach through my own division, or my own formation, which means that the AI is going to get confused to holy hell, and probably going to start to do all sorts of weird turns. So probably it's better to turn out starboard, and follow the heavy cruisers in. Torpedoes not allowed until otherwise directed. Uh, same for you. Decent accuracy and shells are flying right at the battleships of the US. Although accuracy of course is currently not great because we still have to build an accuracy ladder for these ships. Mars and Bayern. Ready for a fight, I hope. Because a fight is coming your way. Mm, I might use these guys to smoke up the rest of the group, at least temporarily. These guys must still be turning their guns around. There we go, guns are turned around and returning fire. The US has opened up. Alright. Um, already the heavy cruisers are fucking up. Oh, we set our first fire on the American battleship. Well done, boys. Uh, the V1 is not quite in torpedo range yet, but I might be able to get her there. Some damage. Negligible. They put that fire out pretty fast. I'd say standard bulkheads are better. V1, I think... Oh, Jesus Christ, what hit you? An 8-inch shell. Oh, dude. There's not much left of you, is there? V1, while you're still afloat, make your contribution to this battle. 
launch the torpedoes. Oh, crap. The Bayern's already down to 65%. You got hit by 17-inch shells. Good lord. Right through the deck, I imagine. Yep. Right through the deck. And now she's flooding and on fire. Launch those tor torpedoes. Shit. Technically, I've already failed the scenario because all of my ships were supposed to survive, but that is just not going to happen. Uh, actually, I'm going to turn out with the battleships, battlecruisers. With the oh, fuck's sake. Sometimes I can get really pissed off with the way that the AI mismanages formations in this game. It's not the first time that they're just going all over the place, these ships. Hold on, are you a heavy cruiser? N wait, are you a battleship? That would mean that the battleships are splitting up. Curious. Normally the AI puts these battleships in the same group, especially since they only get two. This time around they didn't do that. They did not go with one group. Now if- oh, beautiful. That's one DD gone. Uh, extensive fire. Courtesy of an 8 inch shell. If I can get the steer, the Rhineland and the Prince Eugen closer, I might be able to launch torpedoes at this battleship. Sinking her quickly and then pushing the remainder of their heavy cruisers. Which they only have two of. The majority of their firepower is in the battleships. Uh, battlecruisers target this ship over here. I think that is a... L well... It's either a light cruiser or a really... Lightly armed heavy cruiser. But it just carries a fuck ton of them. Uh, DDs. Doing fairly okay. The heavy cruisers are probably going to be subjected to some uh, <clears throat> attention, shall we say, from the battleship. Unpleasant attention, probably, at that. The heavy cruisers are trying to get rid of this destroy destroyer, yes. Just thinking there for a moment. Are those destroyers, or what are they? But yes, they are destroyers. What is that battleship doing? He's turning away. Steady course. Keep getting closer. Nice. Fire on the light cruiser. Damage is going up fairly evenly. 2300 on my side. 3400 done by them. But I'm hoping that by killing a couple of ships quickly we can even out the scores. The main priorities right now should be the heavy cruisers. Or sorry, the, the battleships. 89% ID. I need to know what I'm facing and how well it's protected. John Paul Jones launched torpedoes against a heavy cruiser. Steer, preventative course change. Just making sure I don't accidentally get hit. There goes the John Paul Jones torpedoes. Very poorly visible. Minus 78%. They're not quick though. But they are 19 inch. These things are also 19 inch. And they're in range. Let's target that battleship. Let's hope that the battleship doesn't take interest in me yet. If it does, then this heavy cruiser probably doesn't stand too much of a chance. It has a modicum of belt armor, but not sufficient to stand up against the battleship. Many bulkheads. Anti-torpedo 3. So they can stand up to torpedoes somewhat. All right, let's turn the battle cruisers around a little bit. Bainbridge, the eight inch on the Bainbridge and the 17 inch are now looking like the steer is a very nice snack. Torpedoes away from the steer. Ideally, I'd be using a formation line abreast, but that is just not going to work. Looks like Bainbridge might be turning. Looks like ships turned to port slightly. Yeah, 
ever so slightly she's turning to port side. 6.3 thousand damage done. 3,600 thousand, or sorry, 3.6k damage taken. As of right now, it's going quite alright. It's all fun and games until one of your battle cruisers gets ammo dead, or it's uh, ammo detonated. Uh, use the 8 inch to work over the heavy cruiser if you can. Beautiful. Some good damage over there on the Pueblo. Standard amount of bulkheads. Their DDs have minimum bulkheads. And their light cruisers, well, we haven't quite gotten a good eye on one of those. There it is. Standard bulkheads. Shit. Torpedoes, still cruising. Steer is making a port turn. Swinging her guns around to target the 8-inch guns on the heavy cruiser over there, the Columbus. Incoming fire. 17-inch shells flying right at the steer. Mostly missing for now. 10% chance to hit. And let's be honest, they really only need to get lucky once. Torpedoes out against the heavy cruiser. Mmm, yeah. I don't really expect to hit those, actually. And the real target should be the Bainbridge. So I'm hoping that the Rhineland can launch her torpedoes at that target. The V... Oh, fuck. The V-5 is falling back in the formation. Not what I was hoping for. I'm not sure why the Rhineland is trying to overtake the steer at this point. Seems like an odd choice. Um, do we still have the battleships? Tension. No, we don't. The Georgia is currently much more interested in taking out these heavy cruisers. With good reason, I'd say, because the Steer, the Rhineland, and the Prince Eugen are presenting themselves as much more of a threat to the battleship over here than the battle cruisers currently are. So maybe I can capitalize on that. And focus down the Georgia. My chance to pen is pretty terrible, so we're going to switch to high explosive and just try to burn that ship for a bit. Let's see, the Coney has detected the torpedoes. But has the Bainbridge. V4 has detected torpedoes. Oh, that was close. Good lord, that could have really easily blown up a destroyer. Rhineland's just refusing to do anything. Light cruisers still tailing the battle cruisers. I'm mostly keeping these things in reserve and screening against any destroyers that happen to get too close. Oof. Flooding on the V4. That was. No, 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 no. Let me guess. Minimum? Minimum. Fuck. Torpedo landed on Bainbridge, doing barely any damage. 88 points. I need to launch these torpedoes right now. Right the hell now. You're still in range. The Bainbridge is still in range, albeit turning. V4, you're gonna be dead within the next two minutes. Come on. Come on. Now. More shells narrowly fly over the V4. Fire! Damn ships. I don't get why at this point the V4 is just refusing to fire. That makes no sense. Fine. Dump it all into the water against the Coney. Yep, see? Idiot. See if the heavy cruisers can do something against the Coney before the Coney strikes back with her 19 inch torpedoes. Uh, I got hit by a torpedo. Yeah, I can pretty much write off all of those destroyers already. And the Bayern! Who's doing damage against the Bayern? The 17 inch guns. Oh, Georgia's back interested. 
Oh dear. I was hoping to get some free damage in on there, but not really. Let's use the 6 inch against the Benjamin Stoddard. I don't see this battle turning out well. Especially with all of these fucked up formations. Come on, turn. 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 We have ships to kill. V6. Aggressive torpedo launch. Target Bainbridge. Bainbridge is heading away. The Fargo is not. Torpedoes away against the Fargo. Smoke screen up in 90 seconds. This time, the Mars is also starting to take damage. 17 inch shell. The secondaries have not yet hit the DD. The Coney looks like she's under severe pressure to fall back. I quite like the design on these ships. But the problem is, they're not really survivable. With that low displacement, they can dodge like nothing else, but they really need a lot of distance. And that also opens up the problem, because if you stay at distance, then you also get penetrated right through the deck, which is where I don't have a lot of armor. So if I push in, I die. If I stay at range, I also die. Ergo, uh, you're pretty much fucked whichever way you turn. Smoke screen ready. We got flooding on the V2, V5 and V3. I'm not even sure what these guys are doing. At this point, we're just going to get everybody who can no, who can still maneuver to Would you care explaining why I cannot detach you? Oh, there you go. Whichever ship can still maneuver, I will use to do aggressive maneuvers. I'm going to try and torpedo heavy cruisers. I'm going to... Oh, there goes the V6. I'm going to try and push their destroyers out of existence. And making sure that I can eventually make my way to the battleships. And maybe... Maybe, if the ships survive for long enough, torpedo them. Range, 10. My torpedo range was 9.5. Let's torpedo the Pueblo. Can you turn? Decently well. Sonar 3. That's a problem. Byron's in a pretty bad state. Nice shot. Benjamin Stoddard hits the... gets Yeah, it gets hit by a 12-inch gun. That should kill that DD. Come on. Oh, they always do this. They narrowly survive. There she goes. Stoddard's down. Rhineland. Rhineland. What are you doing, Rhineland? Thank you. Hold on a minute. I'm starting to think that that quintuple launcher only fires forward. This one actually turned. This one did not. That is a problem. Because that means I have to turn into a heavy cruiser to try and take it down. Oh, I don't like that one bit. I really don't like that. Steer that way. Wagon. Yeah, there goes the V2. These DDs are just so useless. Wait, what? Now you torped? Oh, so you can torp. Now I'm confused. Now I'm quite confused. We're still working over the Coney, which as of yet is alive, but barely. Looks like a couple of her guns have seen better days. Most of the ship's already underwater. Three damaged engines, a fucked up rudder. And she's still taken on water, although I don't know where. And actually her buoyancy is going back up again. These torpedoes are not going to do anything. There goes the V3. Let's see, Rhineland, can you torpedo the port? 
Or can you use your port torpedo launchers to try and hit Bainbridge? My chance to hit the Bainbridge, or rather to sink her with one salvo, are pretty dim. But I'm hoping that I can at least slow her down some. Battlecruisers are still maneuvering. I still have some... Make that one DD alive. Not even some, just the one. But I don't really hold any kind of hope for getting these torpedoes to land on any kind of target. Chance to pen, only 28%. These cruisers seem pretty evenly matched. I think those battleships are just going to push me out of existence. I don't see any good way of killing them. I could try going close in, but if I do, I'll probably get butchered all the same. Interestingly, the Georgia is focused on the heavy cruiser. There goes the V5. Gets hit by an 8-inch from the battleship. So you got 17-inch gun triple, some 8s, 1-6, a bunch of 4s, and some 3s, and even torpedoes. Oh. Well, there goes the plan to rush that ship. That is not something that I'd probably be wise to do. Alright, we have a salvo of torpedoes heading towards the Bainbridge. But I'm not sure who sent it. Oh, incoming torpedoes as well. Oigan, starboard turn. Try and mess up the Pensacola before we need to get closer to the battleship. I'm really hoping that the Bain Bridge won't hit me. Because those 17 inch guns hit hard, especially against the heavy cruiser. I mean, this is what they did to a battle cruiser. Here it comes. Dispersion looks dreadful, and it looks like these won't hit. No, we're fine. So we've got outbound torpedoes and some inbound. I don't know if I can steer the Rhineland around those. Minimum bulkheads means that she takes a torpedo. And it's pretty much good night. At least we seem to be pushing these ships back a little. One of the DDs is in rough times. The other one's fine. There's just too many American ships here. Too many of them. Torpedo successfully avoided. Steer, turn in a bit more. Range to the battleship is now 4.2 kilometers. This, I'd say, is a decent opportunity to torpedo the Bain Bridge. These things are pretty fast at 62 knots. And I imagine the Bain Bridge... What?! How the fuck did you do that? You're gonna have to explain this to me. This thing does 27 knots. It's 51,000 tons and it turns in 321 meters? How do you do that? Auxiliary 3 and shaft 3. What the hell? Give me one of their DDs. 310? You're telling me that this battleship of 51,000 tons can turn just about as fast as a destroyer? Okay. That is something. Oh, bye, Rhineland. Uh, you detected the torpedoes. A bit too late then, isn't it? That is something I was not expecting. All torpedoes out against the Bain Bridge. But if she can, in fact, turn in 300 meters, then it's going to be pretty damn difficult to land torpedoes on her. Unless I sort of hand deliver them at about 2 kilometer range. Which puts me in range of every gun on this map. This once again highlights why 
heavy cruisers and battle cruisers are just usually not apt to fight the battleships. Flooding. Oh, Eugen is lucky that she survived that. Two, four torpedoes strike the Pensacola. I'm not even sure if that was the the intended target of those torps. Pensacola is down. Uh -oh. Eugen, with her minimum bulkheads, is taking on a lot of water. And I imagine that the Bainbridge is looking to add some more. I'm not sure what this light cruiser is doing with her torpedo tubes. She's trying to hit me, potentially, by launching a small-ish salvo directly ahead. Can you even hit that far? 9.8. No, you can't. That's a misfire. The AI was not supposed to use those. Now, the Prince Eugen's good as dead. Because she's just going to flood out. Thank you, minimum bulkheads. It means I only have the light cruisers and one and a half battle cruiser, effectively. Maybe I can still sink the Josephus Daniels and the Burrows. That'd be great. This is some sort of weird reverse universe where... My heavy cruisers take almost twice as much time to turn as a battleship. And instead of me torpedoing the battleship, the battleship's torpedoing me. What is going on? Also, I'm going to have to get out of the way of those torps. Fire at the Fargo and the Boise. <laughs> Accuracy leaves something to be desired. And yes, it's in the smoke screen, but it's also only 3.8 clicks out. You have a radar. Oh. But you only have coincidence to range finding? Yeah, no wonder. Have you even hit something? You have. Let me guess, a destroyer. Because otherwise, I don't see you doing any th kind of 1300 damage against anything. Fargo is taking some damage. The battleship is still perfectly dancing around every single torpedo that gets launched at it. At this point, I'm not even surprised anymore. <laughs> I mean, 321 on a battleship? I gotta try and replicate that. Displacement was 52... No, 51,650. Now I am more fascinated with that battleship and how the hell they're doing that than with actually winning this battle. I might, however, still have a chance at killing the Georgia. Let's see. The steer is still pushing in. I'm doing 35 knots. But that battleship is running away at 27. Oh, oh. Yeah, good night. This battle was lost 10 minutes ago. I feel a bit shafted with this battle. Because the AI gave me, once again, minimum bulkheads. And the DDs just... If you so much as sneeze in their general direction, they tend to die. They just blow up. And especially if you have DDs with minimum bulkheads, like the AI gave me. And themselves, to be fair. Oh, there goes the steer. Uh, and themselves, then it's pretty much a non-starter as far as the DDs go. Usually they get one shot by an 8-inch shell. Uh, sometimes something even bigger than that. But if that stacks with the ability of the battleships to just dodge torpedoes like crazy, then I don't really have a play. I can't torpedo them because the DDs die. And even if I do torpedo them, then the battleships just go and do their Saturday Night Fever routine. Oh, there goes the Georgia. And just dodge everything.
That was an interesting explosion of ammo on the Georgia. I wonder if we can still pump enough damage into this ship. I kind of doubt it. Dodge. Thank you. The bros are still being worked over by the secondaries, and hopefully the light cruisers are also assisting. Albeit from slightly greater range. Look at that! We're actually pushing the Bainbridge bridge back. She's starting to flood? I just hope I don't get torpedoed by any of these guys. Come on, can you finish off the burrows? I know we gave you only a few secondary guns, but this should be more than enough. And... 3%. Come on. It's only a destroyer. Oh. It's only a torpedo. Just dodge. Just dodge. Nope. At least I have some anti-torpedo protection. Not that much. Fortunately, the Milwaukee hasn't torpedoed me yet. Me and my big mouth. She just launched her torpedoes at me. Burrows. Thank you. Jesus, that took forever. Um, Byron, you still with me? Yeah. We're actually doing a substantial amount of damage against the Bane Bridge. Surprisingly so. Maybe I should have pushed in earlier. But I wasn't quite expecting to do this well with the guns. Now, I don't really consider the Milwaukee to be too much of a threat, considering she already launched her torpedoes. Uh, that cannot be said for the Columbus, the Pueblo, the Boise, and the Fargo. Although I have my questions when it comes to the Fargo's ability to launch torpedoes. She seems to have a really weird targeting pattern going on. Dodge. Oh, <laughs> that really hurt the Mars. Fortunately, my rate of fire is greater than that of the Bainbridge. She fires every 66 seconds. And when she fires, if she has all guns on target, that's 9 shells. So in 90 seconds... Sorry, in 60 seconds, she puts out 9 shells. In 60 seconds, I put out 18 shells. Albeit of a definitely smaller caliber. I'm going to keep pressure on the Bane Bridge. I want the light cruisers to engage the Milwaukee. More flooding on the Bane Bridge. Many bulkheads. Anti-flood 3. Flooding on the Mars. Oh dear. Oh, torpedoes! Steer into them. Light cruiser status. Engaging the light cruiser. Mars. I don't like that angle. No. No, 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 no. I don't like that at all. I'm gonna hate one. 629. What the hell are you launching at me? 23 inch. Yeah, no wonder. Destroyed the main tower. Conning tower has been damaged. Which I think kind of goes without saying if the thing has actually been damaged. And or destroyed. Let's see if I can potentially blow the Columbus out of the water. It's sad that these light cruisers don't carry torpedoes. Because that could have been very, very valuable. Oh, hello. Is that something you sent my way? Yeah, Milwaukee just sent a bunch of torpedoes my way. Oh, no! Columbus has turned around. And launched her port flank as well. It's just three torps, but I'm going to ram into all three of them, probably. No, just the two. By some miracle, the Mars has not sunk yet. But that's about to change. Milwaukee's still getting peppered by six-inch guns. And the seven-inch from the light cruisers. Standard bulkheads. My lights. Standards. Ammo detonation. Okay, that's the Milwaukee dead. 
Next target, Hamburg. Mars is down. Bayern. Oh, we're doing some serious flooding against the Columbus. 12 inch have done a few good hits. Standard bulkheads. Come on, boys. Desperate last stand maneuvers. I just don't like that the Boise still has torpedoes. She launches those, and it could be good night for a heavy cruiser. Oh, sorry, for a light cruiser. Torpedoes in the water. Target? The Bayern. Not what I was expecting. I thought she'd just blow the Hamburg away. But that apparently is not a priority for the Boise. Even though the Hamburg is only 900 meters away. Maybe Bayern can dodge this. Or at least reduce the amount of damage that she takes. Another couple of good hits, destroying one of the guns in the Columbus. But she has a lot more. She puts out currently 18 shells every 20 seconds. Did I get hit? Yeah, I got hit by one torpedo. Could have been a lot worse. There goes Boise. Nice work, guys. Next target, Fargo. I'm actually surprised we were able to get this many kills with the surviving ships that I still have. Because I'm now going to sink the Columbus. And I'm actually considering ramming into the Bainbridge if I can. Oh, that's not helpful. That came out of Fargo. <laughs> Even torpedoed their own ship. Hamburg is down. <sighs> Come on. Columbus is down. New target, Bainbridge. Bow in. Just see if you can inflict some more flooding. You only have 65 shells left, so make them count. 84% chance to hit. 50% chance to pen, although it is dropping as the angle is increasing. Flooding on the Bain Bridge? Oh fuck, flooding on the Lubeck. How did you get torped? Because I don't believe it was the Fargo. Mm. No, you're just getting hit a lot. That's the problem. It was not a torpedo. You're just getting hit a whole lot. All right, keep pushing. Even if I sink the Bainbridge, which I think I don't have the ammunition for, I uh, probably don't have the ammo to take out the other survivors, like the heavy cruiser. Let's see if the six inch can do some damage against the Fargo. Thankfully, the Pueblo does not have any more torpedoes. But she does. Fargo just dumped another salvo into the water. At this point, I'm sitting around waiting until the Bainbridge just says, now it's enough, and kills me with a 17-inch salvo. Fargo... Seriously flooding, but standard bulkheads and reinforced... No, anti-flood 3. Right through the bow belts. Fire. Target Bainbridge. bridge. With the mains, that is. Secondaries on the Fargo still. Okay, torpedoes avoided. Come on, inflict some damage. You got 36 shells left. Come on. At least take this ship with you. What? You did it? Holy shit. She actually did it. Mid belt penetration. Only a minute or so later. That caused the Bainbridge's main gun to get destroyed, which then caused a flash fire and just killed off the ship. No way in hell. Am I going to win this fight? Yeah, save ammunition. The light cruiser is also still alive. Somewhat. Somewhat. 
27 rounds remain. I've got to be really freaking accurate with those things. If I don't, then it's just down to 6-inch guns from this ship and 7-inch guns from the light cruiser. And this scenario, right, had the request that says, you need to keep all of your ships alive. Hell no. I'm lucky if one ship survives this fight. Flooding. Second flooding. Standard bulkheads. Now you got 7 inch guns which are firing at me. What's your chance to pen like? 24. That's pretty bad. Maybe I should just YOLO more often in my battles instead of playing it safe, because the moment that I started YOLOing in, it actually seemed to work. Cease fire. We got seven shells left. We're going to make them every one count. Every single one. I'm not sure how we got to seven, though. It's a weird number. It's like one barrel didn't fire. Normally, it's just an even number divided by the number of barrels that you have. Not this time. Get those guns to fire forward. Steady as she goes. Let's not ram into that ship. Accuracy 73%. Hold. I want all of this to hit. And I don't want you to angle. Ricochet low. 81. 82. Salvo away. Ammo detonation. Not good enough. Two shells remain. Come on, Byron. Good hit. Flooding. Unfortunately, you're firing at something that has a good amount of bulkheads. How's the Battle of the Light Cruisers going? Oh, close. I really hope that I can kill her before the Fargo dumps more torpedoes into the water. Yes. Yes, Fargo is down. Now I need you to sort of race over at 11 knots, trying to assist the Bayern. Because the Bayern is still fighting. Believe it or not. Not a lot, a lot, uh, there's not a lot left of the Bayern, but just enough to keep the 6-inch firing. Although, one of the bow guns got destroyed, so I'm probably better off angling slightly and just bringing all starboard guns to fight. Because that's 9 barrels. Ah, the light cruiser is joining. Range 8-3. I would say move to intercept, but I don't think you will. Chance to pen? Still 24. Maybe the belt armor will save me yet. The 9-inch. Oh, this could take a while. Whew. This could take a while. Because <laughs> they can barely damage me. But that goes both ways. I can barely damage them. Destroyed a secondary gun. Look at how much ammunition this ship still has left. 2,589 rounds. And that's a standard complement of ammo for the 7-inch. I don't even want to know what an increased complement is. Like 5,000 rounds? The Pueblo, by the way, has done a load of damage. 3,600 versus taking only 1,100. And most of her damage, I imagine, came out of the torpedo tubes. Yeah, 2,283. Main guns were responsible for most... Pretty much all the rest. Trying to box this ship in so I can pen it from both sides. With her facing flat broadside on the starboard side of the Pueblo. And the light cruiser facing the frat, flat port broadside of the Pueblo. Sort of a naval pincer movement. Another flooding. 
43. If the Pueblo had had torpedoes, this fight would have been had. Because she'd have just torpedoed the Bayern. And the Bayern would not be able to survive that. Hold on, why are you not shooting anymore? Keep firing. Thank you. What's Pueblo's speed like? 15.8 and dropping. Slightly. Slightly. I would love a times five on this battle because this is going to take a long time to take the ship down. Unless I... Unless I get a couple of floodings. Not on the Byron, by the way. Um, I could try ramming the Pablo with the Byron. But I think the Byron's more likely to survive just the shelling. Whereas the Lubeck. 49% structural versus 41 on the Pueblo. Maybe the Lubeck can ram the ship. Because with the guns, it's not happening. Sure, we're doing some damage. 32 here, 15 there, another 18 there. But I think we're going to run out of ammo before we sink her. What if you switch to high explosive? Could we start fires? Down is 40% structural. Uh oh. Barn's flooding again. Come on. <laughs> if you're still watching at this point, let's have some fun. The first person who reaches this point in the video, which is 5714, uh, start typing out the lyrics to La Bomba. And then the next person, re uh, reply to it. And we're going to build a thread. <laughs> and people who have not made it this far are going to go, what the hell are they on about? Well, let's have some fun. La Bomba. Start typing. Or start replying to a comment if somebody else has already started it. You know, the thing is, with these long battles, um, sometimes I record these videos quite a while in advance. And then, if they're long battles, and I need something to fill the video with, like typing the lyrics to La Bamba, for example. Um, at some point, I forget what I said in the video, and then a week or two later, potentially, the video gets released. And everybody starts replying with a, a weird line that I just can't place. For example, a few months ago, I think it was already... I asked, um, hey, can you uh, post Tonon Best Cruiser? I think that was the AMX-30 of the Seas, <clears throat> that video. And I was looking at my comment section at some point and everybody started replying, Tonon Best Cruiser. And I was like, what the hell is going on? And then I looked at the video and I went, oh, right. I asked you guys to do that. That was, <laughs> that was my own request. <laughs> Progress is being made. It's down to 32%. <clears throat> How many guns do you still have left? All of them. Great. Lubeck, 1800 meters out. Structural, 31. What's your chance to pen? 29%. Oh, she might flood. Her buoyancy is going down. Maybe I don't need to ram her. I just need to flood her. Oh, her buoyancy is going back up again. Come on. Uh-oh. Fire and flooding on the Lubeck. That's not what I want to see. It's all the more dangerous because now I might hit my own ship. Byron's going to have to cease fire for a second. Mm, yeah, you're good. Come on. No, buoyancy's back up to 25. And I've now wasted the opportunity to ram. 
Oh no. <clears throat> I still don't know who's going to win this. <clears throat> My structural integrity has been reduced to 9%. They've been reduced to 22. I think I took it down from 40-ish percent to 22% just by virtue of the 6-inch guns. She's incurred a bit more flooding. 8% structural on Bayern. <clears throat> it's just waiting until some sort of secondary gun starts getting a flash fire. 21. Oh, you got a flash fire. Juicy. That's good damage right there. She's lucky not to die to that flash fire. Because that's what killed the Georgia. Come on. I need somebody to tell of the valiant tales of the uh, German Navy. And I needed to be the Bayern. Because everybody else is dead. Where are my six inch guns looking? Uh, fairly submerged. <laughs> oh crap, they destroyed one. Okay, so now it doesn't matter which way I turn. Because I've got four guns left in starboard and four guns left in the port side. 12% on the Pueblo. It's like one of those toddler fight. Oh, another flash fire on the Pueblo. And another. Is she chain exploding? She has lost this turret, that one, that one, and that one. I think she's down to three turrets, effectively. And four and two in secondaries. Are those seven still firing? Yes. Bow is. Might be the only one. She's down to six percent. I'm down to seven. So judging by the amount of damage that I've taken, I'm slightly better off than the Pueblo. Range is 900 meters. Sailors are now <coughs> moving to shout insults at the American ship. Come on. Come on. Get her. 5%. Destroyed another secondary gun. Is there anything left to destroy on that ship? 5%. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. We can win this. 4%. Who wants to go lower? Ship's just not flooding, which is what I was hoping for. But she already has, what, four compartments flooded? One, two, three, three and a half. Maintain pressure. 3%. Can we get another flash fire, please? On them, just to be sure. Six hundred meter range. It looks like the secondary guns are now actually doing a lot more damage. At about a thousand meter range or less, they can penetrate nineteen inches of belt armor, which is a lot more than what this ship has. Two percent, and she's burning. How long have we been circling like this? 1%? How's the... You're not terribly happy about this whole thing either, are you? She'll live, the Bayern. But she's probably going to get scrapped for parts when she comes back. Because this ship... I don't think that this is repairable. 
And this is when I get a flash fire and I detonate. 0.7. Oh, come on. Humor me. Fire at you for a bit. No, that's not doing anything. No, it has to be armor piercing. 0.6. I think I've never taken a heavy cruiser down this slowly. Death by a thousand cuts. Point... Point nothing? There. Whoa, she got it. Oh, wow. Well, it looks like the Antarctic base is safe, but good lord, that was dangerous. The American fleet's been destroyed, but at a significant cost. Now, I won't play the battle again, but I do want to check out one thing. Um, I want to build a United States ship. Battleship. I want to see if I can get it down to that turning circle that they had. I think they were using a modern one. Was it 56? Or 51, 6? 56. Turning circle, 565. How? 404. Oh, that helps. But they didn't have Antitorp 5. How the hell did they do that? The ship was motoring away at about 27 knots, I think, but this is 407. How did they do that? If I reduce displacement? Was it 51, maybe? There. How long is this ship? Tell me. How long are you? 253 meters, and you only take 335 to turn? Whoa. That's impressive. This is a battleship hull. That only takes 335 meters to turn. I've seen destroyers need twice as much. Especially when they were at speed, of course, but come on. Anyway, with that, I'm going to end the video. I hope you guys stuck it out all the way to the end. And that, at this point, we already have a chain going of La Bomba. If not, start it. And uh, if it's already going, then please add to it with the next line of the lyrics. So we're going to have some fun with it. Anyway... Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this uh, long and uh, tough fight with the Germans against the Americans. And I'll catch you guys soon for another video.